So up yeah. on here, you've you got your track display. Can't quite read that. Eyes on. Yeah, watch your head. Yeah, I So this is where you can see what's happening in the van. So it's got a little light bulb there, so to backlight it up. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got your two water tanks. So, and they've got those indicator rods that show you okay, where it's sitting at. Yep. yep. And now with this van, you've only got one pump. Turn that other one off. Um, so when you're ready to use your water, you can just push the little water droplet and you'll see that it goes on and off. So off, on. So that way you can use your tanks. Um, when you're using mains, make sure you have that pump turned off. Otherwise it will continue to pull through from the tanks, not from the mains. Um, up the top here, you've got your clock, tells you what the time is, and then you've got your voltmeter. So when these things are on um, 240, they'll sit at 13.6 when they're fully charged. When they're off grid, they sit around 12.5 volts. When your system gets to the batteries, get down to 11.8, they turn off. Yep. So it actually shuts the whole system down. Um, the reason that that is to protect those batteries from getting damaged. Yeah. So, AGMs you only get about 50% life out of them, where uh, lithiums you get 70%. So, so, the easiest way to maintain it and, and monitor it is by keeping it on that voltmeter. Yeah. So if you're off grid and it gets down to about 12 volts then you need to do something about it. Obviously we're not getting enough sun. Um, you, so that you can either get more solar in with that auxiliary panel or plug your car in with a Gray Anderson plug which will then charge it, run your car and it will charge it back up or plug it into 240 and bring it back up. Now with solar, the key thing for that is UV light. Yep. Direct sunlight is what they run off. So um, if it's got dirt, dust, bird poo, cloud, rain, all that sort of stuff affects your solar production. So make sure you keep it nice and clean, out in the sun, in the shade, you're gonna look big, everything's gonna be reduced. So it's all about production versus consumption. So you can see how much is sitting in there. And then you'll be able to see solar production, which is how many amps are going in. And same with the auxiliary. So if you're running your car, it'll pump okay. um, yep. power into it there. Up here, so you can see it's, it's connected to 240. Now, these ones are only indicators. They're not real accurate. They're boring. Okay. <laughs> so, but it'll give you an idea where the battery levels are. But this one, time remaining works on the solar. So at the moment, that lovely blue sky, so it'll say 199 hours. Yep. Cloud will go over and it'll drop to 20. Okay, so don't don't pay attention okay. to that. Do your head in. So look at the voltmeter. Keep it above 12 volts when you're off grid, and you'll have happy days. Because yeah. if it does shut down, the only way to reboot it is to plug it into 240. Because your solar yeah. won't reboot it back in again. Um, but also, when it turns off, it turns off all 12 volt, which is includes your fridge, even if it's on gas, because it runs on that LED display and a, and a 12 volt panel. So you'll lose your fridge as well. So. If it starts to um, get low, plug your car and run in if you're really desperate to so, drive some 240. But if you're off-grid, use gas. Gas. Yeah. On the fridge. On the, fridge. Yeah. Yeah. the biggest power consumers in caravans is that little square box. TVs are a shocker. Oh, okay. Yeah. TVs and radios suck power really big. Okay. Think LED think lights are really efficient. I think radios with the TV, yeah. 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 Uh, all your light switches, all nice yeah. and ladles. So you got your bedroom. Uh, kitchen and be bedrooms. Um, of course, you've got all your nice um, strip feature lighting, what I call them the romance lights. <laughs> <laughs> I live, I live in hope, yeah, go on. <laughs> <laughs> Never had them on, you reckon? Um, so then you've got insects, so yeah. then you've got your awning lights, so your insect and the awning, tunnel boot insect and awning, um, tunnel yeah. light, so white and yellow. Um, now, with this one, here's your radio. Yep. You would have noticed, I don't know who noticed whether there was two guys in here working before. Yep. Yeah. Sorry, when I walked in here this morning, that was dead. Um, so you've got a brand new one in there now. Um, um, so it was working yesterday, it died overnight. So at least it died here, not when you've taken it away. Yeah. <laughs> um, so stereo system, it's a CD player. Um, also, you've got your normal gear as well. So you've got your AM and FM radios. So with the stereo, it's got two zones. So there's inside and outside. So. Okay. There's a button here that can switch. I right, hold that in. Right. I just bumped that out of my head, didn't I? Yeah, it did. So you got outside, hit it again, bring it in. Or you got all, both. Triple Z. 
Uh, finding your stations is these two buttons, so you can go through and scan. Yeah. Find the different ones. Yeah, that's the one you that's, probably want. That's yeah. the one I like. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the rest are all just your other <laughs> settings. So, it's CD player, radio, Bluetooth, so you can pair it up to your phone, Spotify. Uh, auxiliary 1, which is USB, Auxiliary 2, which is the old iPod jack. Okay. Cool. Apparently there's still people out in the world that have those. Yeah, me. <laughs> does, it, does it work? Yeah, only because it's never been taken off the bedside. Uh, dock. Dock? Yeah. If I took it off there, it'd die. It, it'd die instantly. It's still it? power. But then it's got a power button, turn it on and off. So nice and easy. Right, right. Now, this is the back folder here. You can store all those man user manuals and everything that's yeah. in, the, in the van, but it's got your warranty card and your service book. So with your warranty, the body of the van is covered by essential for that five year period. Any appliances in the van are covered by the individual manufacturers. So Dometic, Thetford, Dometic. So that can be 12 months, two years, depending on the appliance themselves. Now, if you do have any problems or issues, um, please contact our service centre first. We then go through and help you resolve it. If it's a part that from Essential, it's going to come out of the factory. So it comes out of Melbourne, it can take six to eight weeks to get some stuff from them. Um, if it's an appliance, we'll find somewhere close to you that does their service agents. Um, it's usually the Dometic and Thetford stuff is with these service agents. The rest we do us as well. They just send us new parts and we replace them. So where do you guys live? Springfield. Springfield. So yeah, there's well, Dometic, is that Springfield? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, so we, we'll help you get that sorted. When you're tra now traveling, Got to remember every man his dog's bought a caravan, thanks. Yeah. Um, it used to be when I travelled, it was one car, uh, one caravan to 20 cars. Now it's 20 caravans to one car. So, yeah, it's been a huge amount of influx and people buying them and, and using them. Um, so, it does put a lot of pressure on little service agents all around the place. So, be patient with us. Um, getting part supply and getting access to, to, to service agents does take a bit of time in some locations. So, be patient. Work with us, don't yell and scream at us, we can't fix it unless we've got someone else that can help us. Mm -hmm. uh, for an example, had the air conditioning dying in, in North Queensland in Townsville, couldn't get them in there for three weeks to even look at it. But they were heading north, they were going to Cairns, so they went into there three days later. Okay. They got it in, they got it fixed. The little man in the factory didn't put enough gas in it to start with. Mm -hmm. uh, it's simple stuff, but. Okay. Um, work with us and we'll try and get it done. Especially when you're travelling, we try and get you done urgently. Yeah, yeah, you know, exactly. But it is difficult to find places to get stuff done. Um, okay, um, so servicing, your first service is at six months, then at 12 months. So it'll be, what's that, March next year and September next year. And then it's 12 months after that. All nice and easy. Now, it's got range hood, so it's got its own light on it, got the extraction fan. Um, and it's a little slide so you can get that mesh out to clean it. And so I'm going to knock this off and spill it everywhere like I normally do. The bench comes up. Now this lid has got a safety switch built into it. So when it gets to about there, it switches off. You can hear the little click. Um, so it needs to be up for it to operate. Cleaning underneath here, it just pops up. It's got little rubber grommets. Now with the stove itself, um, so it's full gas, except for this one electric element, which is this one up on here. Um, and it's got a 240 isolator switch that's up over the top of that wall. I um, highly recommend just turning that on and leaving it on. I guarantee you in six months time when you go to use this one, you'll go not working. Mm. And you've forgotten that switch is up there. No. Most common one, that is the other one's not working. <laughs> Turn the isolator switch on. Yep, mm -hmm. there it goes. Um, now using the gas side of stuff, so it's got an igniter built into it, so it's just a matter of, oh, push this one. Oh, yeah. So push it in, turn it to the left. Fire up, get all the gas through, get on there. I'll leave the bottle on or off. Get up and off. Yep. So once it fires up, so then you can then so push in, turn to the left, light it, then turn it up and down to see. So you've got your two gas ones over here, your oven, your grill, gas, and then electric. The oven's got a light on it. Mm -hmm. So you can see what's happening in there. Mm -hmm. Sandy loves her oven, so we go away every two weeks and um, we'll pull up, throw a pizza or lasagna in there, reheat that, and um, go set the van up, dinner's ready. It makes it nice and easy. Now, grill, again, the door needs to be open for this one. And we've got another rack on the tray. Now, heat transfer from this top unit can go down into this unit, so please remove the plastic before operating the appliance. <laughs> 
someone didn't in the court file and they nearly burnt their whole band down. Yes. But no, it's theirs. That's why I make the silly statement. Because you can you get it to these days. Yep. Yeah. People forget. Okay. Especially those old people. Yeah. You can turn the gas on if you like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was like, we don't have one about that. I was like, there's a shelf. There you go. There you go. Now, with these ones, if you turn it on and let it go too soon, it turns off. So you've got to turn it on so it actually fires up. A couple of seconds. It's usually pretty good. Right, I'm going to get into here. Righto. So under the couch here is the storage compartment. So both sides have access from the top and the front. Okay. Little doors there. You could also take off the cushion and you've got access to that it's one under there. Yeah. Keeps the room. Great okay. right. Heidi hold it. Hide it from the kid the booze from the kids. <laughs> right. they're, they're in the room, so fun. Righto. Um, foot rests, yeah. these ones pop up and lock into place. Yeah. They have these little arms that are on the underneath here. So the bracket for them, it comes all the way out to about here. On the end of the bracket is the little buttons, little metal button. So you can lift it up, push the button up, and then lower it back down. And they just sit there, there's no lack of locks in there. All the way down to the end, on the metal. Yeah, I can feel the arms. Yeah. All the way down the end of it. Just lift the, the pad up. And now there's a little button on it. Fine then. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, table, that's where it sits when you're travelling, but it then comes out. Now, remember, it's got little tiny piano hinges which has little tiny screws in it. So, it's not a secret or a dance floor. So, you'll rip them off. And they sit in under here. And in, the, in those cupboards is novel PowerPoint and 12 volt sockets as well. They also have little holes on the side, they can poke your cords through from this yeah. charging station on both sides. Yeah. Um, and then, so do you have like any recommendations to, when it's travelling? Just leave in that, it in like that, that position there, that, that's right, where it sits. Nothing else? Yeah, it just sits there, yeah. okay. it sits there nicely all day long. Mm. Um, reading lights over here, so you've got them here and over the bed. These are touch lamps, so swipe on them. And they bring on the two different ones. They do swivel full 360. Now, turn them on. My assistant, hold your finger on the button. And they do. Yeah, one of those romance lights. No excuses now. Just gonna make sure we don't harm you. Now, I need everyone to go this way. Oh, Sorry, you're right. With a shuffle, especially in these little tiny vans, it's even more charging. I'll get Right up. <laughs> so, we've got a light over the, over the bench here. So it's a little push button on the, in, the, in the center. Uh, your standard flick mix household tap. Mm -hmm. um, now, if you do get spluttering in these taps, um, the only way to get it out is to actually run them through. Uh, if you get, which has got air in the lines. So if you get air in the lines, you can go through every tap. So shower, vanity, kitchen, filters, and the one out on the drawer bar. Otherwise, you'll get water hammer in here, and also the pump's really loud. That one's pretty about normal. I don't think there's any area by the filter. Then you've got your filtered water. Now, there's a filter, which is for that, is in underneath here. So, um, highly recommend replacing them every year, at mm. your annual service, yeah. uh, depending on how much you're using it. Um, you can park them up for a while, which means they then build up green algae in them. So, carbon filters. Now, with all these counter tubes, they all have the same latch on them. So, now, with these things, they like to fly open. So, if you are having a door or cupboard coming open, the easiest way to test it is to actually pull on the, the handle. You see, that one hasn't locked in. Is to pull on this end, this one here. If it pops open from down the bottom here, it needs adjusting. 
um, to adjust it, it's just this little bracket here. On it, it's got two out the out screws on the outside, it'll loosen them off and it slides in and out. That. Some of them have a third one in the centre, which is the lock, the lock one in. So it's about four mil usually, from here to here. Um, it also has the little buttons on it, which then keeps that pressurised on, on this inside box, which helps keep them closed as well. Um, so always make sure that you make sure they are closed when you walk around. If they're not, as you go out the door, they will pop open. Yeah. Um, Get a speed bump. But if it is popping it is open, you can quickly just pull on them to see if that is coming open. And if it's not coming open, it's not the latch, something else is forced to open. Yeah. Right. Now, TV. Just go on the standard pilly. Right now, with these ones, they run on 12 watt power supply, which is up in here. The little green light that's up the top there, that's the booster. So if it's not on, you're not going to get reception. It has that little black button turned it on and off. So getting reception, this is the fun part. Who's tech savvy? Me too. <laughs> right. Did you know there's an app? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. See? Oh, I taught you something. There you go. Right. So we get an antenna reception for digital TV, so analog stuff. Um, is you've got to wind this one up, so it's got arrows up and down, so it's pointing all the way up. I only wind them until they get firm, don't over crank them, otherwise you'll have this handle in your hand and springs and all sorts of fun stuff. Now, you want to find the receipts and where the repeater stations are. So, if you search on your app store for DTV, so digital television antennas, okay. Okay. there's a few in there, there's paid ones, there's freebies. Um, this is one of the freebies. So it shows you all the repeater stations on a map, but you can also get a list of them. So it just shows more in the local area, closest or less to the top one. So, and it points to where it is. So that's Mount Cooper. So we've got these little arrows on the, on the here, there's two of them. So one on the top is the base where it's home. The other one, you pull down, rotate him around, pop him around to there. That's why we know it's pointing in the direction. And then you go to your, you know, make sure it's in digital TV, so yep, your TV input. And then you go to menu, auto tune, Australia obviously, unless you want to go to Austria. And away it goes and finds all the station. Takes all the bloody hard work of tune, rotate, tune, rotate, done and dusted. Um, so now different inputs. So it's got digital television, DVDs, HDMI, USBs, all that sort of gear. So which is all on the back here. Yeah. So HDMIs, DVDs on the up this end. Right. But when you're travelling, all this stuff needs to be stowed away. So again, pull him down, rotate it round, line him up with his mate up on the roof, make sure he's locked in, and then wind him down. Again, just till it feels firm, then I would take them. One's back in this position. Now, so turn him off. Now, to remove this off the wall, make sure you unplug it out of this socket first, because that one's got a six amp glass fuse in it. If you pull it out of here, at some point it's going to arc, blowing that fuse. Okay, good luck finding one in the middle anyway. Right. Now, it's also on this mount, it's got this little clip here. So, what it does is it locks this TV onto the mount. So when it's on there, it's not going to get bounced out and smash on the floor. Right, he just clips off and slides straight up. Best place to stall them, get up the front of the bed, under your bedding, between the pillows. Yep. That way they'll sit there all day long. Did you get them, Chip? Oh, quite nice. Put that bit of crisp back in there. recommend putting them in position before you turn them on. Yeah, it does. Yep. No. 
Uh, it's a three-speed fan. So a nice high power on them. Um, yeah, the front hurts, yep. but the back hurts more. Yeah. Um, once I've got it going, if I need to move it, I use the back of the motor. So I can move around quite easy. Always make sure that little arm is, is locked in. Um, that way it's going to stay in the right position. Uh, now with these ones, they have a timer on them. So these are the, like, these are the indicators here. Top switch, 30 minute interval. So 30, 60, 90, 120, okay. switches off. No light means it's constant. But yeah, they're a marriage saver. Uh, it'll, be on, it'll, it'll be on constant on my side and not yeah. on yours. Well, we have four, and they always seem to find not find my wife where she, wherever she is. <laughs> if a woman of a certain age, so things get hot and cold yep. rapidly. Oh yeah. yeah. Now I'm getting it. That's great. <laughs> um, <laughs> look forward to it. So hanging space over yeah. here, overhead cupboards, head banging shelf, yeah. <laughs> yeah. little pockets. Um, they have a double power point and a single yeah. USB in That's there. Right um, you get all your drawers, etc. that's in here. Now, in this cupboard here is the battery management system. Yep. So this is where everything gets controlled through the van for your 240, etc. Yep. So I need someone to download an app for me, because there's an Odyssey link. Oh, okay. You call the techno one, there's your phone. Awesome. Download it for me, because I'll get okay. you connect up before you load, go. Just from Facebook? Yep. Oh, it's an it handy. <laughs> Don't get, so, don't get them started. Yeah. <laughs> I got a mate's got one of those ones from China. We love you. Oh, uh, work just got me. China's listening. <laughs> work just got me an off hope, which they must have been using this. Uh, um, so what, what am I looking for? So search on one word, V for Bob, M for Mary, Pro, V-R-O. V and Pro? Yeah, that's it. So install. Yeah, continue. Bet you with vote or fail as well. Uh, no, <laughs> with um. Opus. Uh, what am I doing? Skip that. The credit debit. I'll let you run in with Google Play stuff. I don't want to hear. Yeah, no, I'm with um, Audi. Check his trips. Telstra. Yeah. Which is Telstra, yeah. It's Telstra, yeah. Telstra, yeah. So when it's finished, we'll okay. still lay down. Yeah. Uh, so now this unit is a microprocessor. Yeah. So there's no fuses or relays in it. Uh, it's, just, it's basically a mini, mini computer. Yeah. Of course, they have problems and faults and electrical short circuits and stuff like that. So to fix this one, it's like any microprocessor, you've got to reboot it. No keyboard to do the control lock delete, just a little button on this thing. But down the bottom here, on the on the back plate that's the writing is they push the bits out. But down on the where this writing is is a data cable. Yep. To the left of that is a little raised nib. A little button. Just punch that, turns it off, and turns it back on again. So resets. Okay, now we've got these little lights that are blinking here. So it's got three different colours. So green, yellow and red. If there is a fault, it'll blink different numbers as well. Yep. So they don't do paper manuals anymore. So you've got to go down onto their website, download the PDF manual for it. It's got a troubleshooting sheet in yep. there, which tells you what that light means, what the different numbers of blinks mean, and how to fix it. 90% of the time, it's hit the reboot. Yep. And that, that's on the app there, is no, it? No, the app is where you can actually see everything that's on the track display. Yeah. That's up on the on the wall there, but also some extras as well. So mm -hmm. open that one up. Now we need to pair it up to this unit. So a little button on the side here. Hit it go green. Allow it. Hit skip for registration. We don't do that right now. Allow again. And scan. And it's ODL selected. It takes about 30 seconds for it to pair up the first time. And once it all comes, the button's got to grow down and the battery lights up. Now we're connected. Righto. So with this one, again, so everything that's on the track display, but the extra bits. Okay. So now you've got light zone controls. I we'll tap on that one, that turns off all the ceiling lights. Oh, cool. yeah. so only in the kitchen and bedroom and feature lights. Something goes dark in here one night, you know, Dad's in there, so I play with yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, I like how you're doing your hair. Yeah, you yeah, yeah. okay. Well, that's the answer. It doesn't turn that one. <laughs> um, but you've also got light zone two, which is your outside awning. Okay. 
Like really handy if you want to go out for the night. So yeah. You turn your awning light yeah. on, get in the car, turn it off, drive back, yeah, turn it back on. Boogie man won't get you. Um, but there is only the two um, light switches in here. Yeah. So, but you've also got your water tank pump. So if you get in the car and you go, did I turn that pump off? You can go in there and check, turn it off if it's not. Okay. Um, now, if you turn something off of that app, make sure you turn it back on. Because uh, okay. it actually turns it off at the processor, which kills the switches on the wall. Right. So if the light switches aren't working, tell them to stop playing with them. And, and, don't, and don't let your battery go play on this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> with, that, with the turn it off. Yeah. Um, you don't have the other stuff, you don't have a slide out bed or anything like no. that. So now you've got your battery level, which is again an indicator, your water yeah. tank levels. There is no sensor in the grey water tanks because they just clog up the smoke. Okay. Yeah. And, yeah. Just, and there's no tank through, so yep. that's fine. Yeah, because they, they, get, they get smuck in them. Um, so your battery management side of stuff, so it's pushing in 5 amps at the moment, sitting at 14.4, so it's really pumping lots of power in, um, and it's using 5.2. Yeah. It'll always use power whenever you've got something turned on, because everything goes through the, the battery system on it's 12 volt. Yep. And then it doesn't, it's your 240. Orange means it can see those uh, options. White means that it's not connected. Uh, so this card's not plugged in. Yeah. Now there's more extras you can add to it, so which is Smart Connect. So these are all the sensors. So you can get sensors that go on your tyres for their pressure, sensors for your uh, fridge for its temperature, and sensors that go on your gas bottles. Okay. So you can see what they're at. Pretty handy. Yeah. Gas bottles is the more handy one. Yeah. Well, yeah, because yes, definitely. that's what the gas bottle sensor does. Okay. It tells me exactly how much is in there, yeah. when, yeah. It's empty, when it's going to be empty. Mm. Um, I've worked it out now, it's about 10% per day that we use. Okay, cool. the gas yeah, that's a good idea. Mm. But after leaving them empty, getting stuck with them both empty yeah, once, you be first. twice, <laughs> I know exactly what they are before we leave. You would not be the first. No. Uh, but yeah, that's it. That's it. So that's, this one down that, that's the DC to DC oh, yeah, charger. Yeah. So when you have two batteries on a van, you want to actually push more power through to them yeah. um, and all the new cars and their technology they all have smart alternators um, and CAN bus systems so you've got to trick them to say spend more power down here yeah. otherwise it won't charge it while you drive along yeah. like that working weight and gold those things yeah. game changer for charging big double battery mm -hmm. um, i've got 900 amp hours of lithium that's fine to keep going yeah. <laughs> okay. so that's cool yeah. that's good that. oh no that one's straight away. But always make sure they're nice and flat and stowed when you're travelling. Same with that one over there. Uh, now up in here, so you've got the 240 isolator for the stove over there. Mm -hmm. But you've also got two in here, some in here as well. So you've got your air con, your hot water service and your fridge. So hot water one is when you want to use that hot water service when you're on, on power. So it heats that up and away you go. When you're off grid, you've got your gas source. Mm -hmm. um, so turn that one on. When it's heating, when it lights, it blinks. Mm -hmm. Once it's lit, it'll stay a solid red. Once it gets up to temperature, the light goes out. There you go. So you can hear it kick in. Yep, big flame going up on the tube. Um, so once it's successfully lit completely, it'll stay red like it is now. And then once it gets the temperature, the thermostat kicks it in and out. So you leave it on, it sort of kicks in and out. Yeah. Wind is always fun because it'll go on probably two or three times during the night. Uh, if you're a light sleeper, mm -hmm. turn it off. But I like a hot shower in the morning, so that's staying on. Mm -hmm. Which one? No, I like yeah. the hot. Neither of us shower in the morning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can choose which one you want to use. Yeah. Um, now when you park it up and put the van in storage, make sure you turn, sure you turn off your hot water service off the 240. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it'll keep heating while you park it up. <laughs> Mine, it's like mine buzz because I don't turn it off. Mm -hmm. I'm off grid, I don't have any um, 240. Alright, yeah. I've got mine. <laughs> um, Aircon. So with these ones, it's got the remote, so it's got your power, temp up and down, fan speeds, modes. So it's a full reverse cycle aircon, so it's got cooling, humidity, fans, heating and automatic. Uh, this is also the um, Harrier version means it's got the work light on it um, and then it's got turbo modes and all that sort of stuff so it can heat and cool rapidly. Um, really great little unit, highly efficient on power. Um, so if you ever change over the lithium, you can actually lithium batteries in and a 2600 or larger inverter wired to the van's electrical system and you can run these air cons. Um, 
time with my 900 amp hours, I can get six hours out of the aircon. So on heat, on that's on heat. Yeah, we got about seven on on cool. Ah, that's just fun. Yeah, you gotta be careful on that one. We did it at home as a test. Yeah. So, just pull it back so, <laughs> so you got your um, vent so you can move it around. So um, it's currently in sort of nice and quiet. Uh, now, so you move those around. Now its intakes are in here, uh, which means it's got free filters, which is little tabs that are in here. You can get pull them out to clean them. So you need to do this one on a regular basis. Um, and during, so if you're using the van lots, once a week. Um, so if you're away for long periods of time. So the front part's getting them out. So you've got to get something to, to slide this one out far enough oop, to pull in, and these slides out. So nice. that, a little bit of mesh in there, so a bit of warm soapy water and clean him out. Make sure you put them back in the, sort of the correct way, so it looks at that little tab facing down. Now, putting it back, fun challenge. Oh, okay. It's got a piece of plastic on the roof, then it's got this skinny little slot. So easiest way is to pull, help pull this one down slightly, that way you can line up the hole first, bring it back around to it so it's square, and then once you want, in it goes. So there, yeah, that's where it just catches all the debris dust. Yeah. Um, now, if you do lose a remote or it goes flat, this one here is a touch screen. So you can do everything that's on the remote yeah. from, from up on the, on the roof there. There you go. Uh, microwave, so the standard household microwave. Ooh, it's got the lovely glass plate. This place to store that one where you're travelling is in there. Mm -hmm. And then you've got your freezer. Yep. Now with these ones, they've got locks on them, so sliding across the door's locked. You just slide slightly and unlocks them. Close it, locks it straight away. Slide it till they clip, unlocks them completely, and then they're just a normal door. Now when you're putting it in storage, you don't want these doors to jar because that way, if that one little swivels out, comes around, clips onto that one there. That way it's not going to get mouldy. Okay. Yeah. 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 Someone else wants not your phone. Mm -hmm. Turn it in. Entry door. Right, now these ones, these ones are removable so you can clean them. Mm -hmm. uh, not dishwasher safe, they melt. Yes, yeah, someone <laughs> found out the hard way. Oh, I didn't put those in the kitchen. Because people are lazy. Oh, I put everything in the dishwasher. And then dishes. she had to wait nine months to get yeah, one. Yeah, it's taken us ten months to get ours replaced because they cracked yeah. and it's forever under warranty to get them through. Yep. Um, yeah, so parts fly through yeah, the parts flies through all the shopping. Yep. Yeah. Um, Crisp has got a slide on it there for frugal veg. The shelves are adjustable so you can move them around. Um, yeah, not the plastic ones that break. Yeah. Uh, now the big silver element up the back is what makes this thing cold. So if it ices up, it's going to get hot. So it makes sure it stays frost free. To do that is you just use your temperature zone. So change the temperature in there, it'll defrost. It'll drip tray at the bottom, it takes it and drips all the water outside. So happy days. So keep it ice free and it'll be nice and cold. But again, just keeping that temperature zone to set. Always turn it on 24 hours beforehand, get it nice and cold, throw your food in 12 hours beforehand, it's nice and cold and salmonella can start home. Yep. No fun, no fun camping with salmonella, I can tell you. Food poisoning is not a good look. But when you're living on the road. Oh. Um. <laughs> now there's different modes in this thing. Um, but the best one to leave it in is automatically. So you can change that. Now with auto, it'll go to 240 first. Can't find 240 and then go hunt for gas. Um, the only time it'll go on to 12 volt is if, when it senses that the car's plugged in and started. So once you've started up, you'll then it'll go over to 12 volt. Then when you stop, it switches off that ignition. Now with that, um, when you're traveling, you need to make sure you have your gas bottle turned off. Um, because it won't automatically, if you pull up, it won't automatically go into gas straight away. It does have a time delay on it, 15 minutes or 3 degrees. Okay. The reason for that is if you're driving along and you pull up in a service station, you don't want this automatically firing up onto gas. Apparently petrol will make it flame, so it will look cool. Um, so you can manually choose that. So if you want to stop and go have lunch or go shopping or go for a bushwalk, um, you can manually change it over to, to what you want to use. So just go into your mode again, click it over onto gas, and then it'll turn on the gas straight away. Yeah. Now, if it can't find a supply, um, so for example, put it on the battery, 
it'll tell you there's something wrong. So you get this warning error light, and then it'll flash which one it is, and of course the annoying beep. So obviously you need to go do some troubleshooting. Go, go to make it's plugged in on the car, and then it fires up. Then you need to actually come and reset the unit. So come in, hold the power button until it beeps once, and then it should clear the error and fire away. You know, the car because it's, you can't find it. I will keep doing that until we fix the problem. But if you've cleared it, reset it, and away we'll go. Coming on gas? Yep. Yep, so on gas, but in, in manual mode. So it always When I go over to hit auto, again, always go to 240. So find 240, if that's the preferred power supply to apply. Um, so turning it on and off is, it is heat sensitive, so you could have a finger that's warm, but that's your power on and off button. Yeah, leave it on auto and I'll build this thing. Cool. Now there is two problems again that goes along with, with power supply and gas and, and this thing here. Mm -hmm. um, power wise, it's one, there's a power point in underneath on, the, on this cupboard, that gets bumped and turned off. The switch that's up on the isolator, that gets turned off. The power plug out on the outside wall, uh, the pull plug gets pulled out or the trip switch circuit gets done. Check those ones before you ring service center. <laughs> Some basics. kids come along with a caravan park and hey, I'm uh, plug your power plug. Yep. Uh, um, gas, gas bottle's not turned on, or any kinks in there, or, or there's a valve in underneath that's been turned off. You'd be surprised how many people go, oh, no one goes in that cupboard, they to get turned off. <laughs> right, uh, someone's been, yep, whatever. Yeah. Um, and then 12 volt, there's something wrong with supplies. If it's not those simple troubleshooting things, then there's something more sinister happening, so we need to then do more yes. troubleshooting. So ring us, look like you're trying to get it sorted over the phone. Um, if not, we can then go through and talk to uh, our other supplier and see what they can do, do the service agent or that sort of stuff. They're usually pretty good these features, same with the, same with the air cons. But getting used to using them is the fun yeah. part. Yeah. So when you're travelling, always make sure you lock these doors, including the bottom one. If everyone forgets to lock that one and load that bottom shelf up with bottles and milk and, and it just puts a lot of pressure on it. And yep. Um, they replaced all these pin, um, hinge pins with um, aluminium ones because they had plastic and they were snapping. Mm -hmm. So we're having lots of doors sliding up and down hallways and Amazing. food everywhere. Yeah, yeah. it's great, uh, especially when you have a gib. <laughs> uh, the gib's a freeway. <laughs> uh, go the Savannah Way between um, Burke Town and Northern Territory border. Mm -hmm. From Hell's Gate, Hell's yeah. Gate is 320 k. Guess how long it took us to do it? Three days? No, t seven hours. Yeah. Uh, Corrugations are this high, yeah, so we're in the spoon drain going around the goat place. Yeah. Yeah. Fun day. Lots of boozers <laughs> drunk that night, I can tell you. <laughs> uh, right, right. No. <laughs> on sweet door is stuck. Mm. Mm. That's because someone's driven it from there to here without it being locked. Oh, so okay. what they do is they move, they slide, and they go bang, and, and they wedge in down the bottom. Yep. Of the Sorry. The point part is getting it unstuck. to fix that one. Uh, but they do have shock bolts, that's why you put these bolts in. Mm -hmm. so lock it at the top, lock it at the bottom, mm -hmm. and that won't happen. Yep. And we want to go. <laughs> so should we leave that door open or closed? It's closed. Like... So when, you, when you're travelling, make sure it's closed and locked away. Okay. Otherwise you get this problem we've got now. That it's it's to be and it's a really hard job so to get it out. When you say closed, Yep, so in, all the way over. Way, yep. yeah. So it slides, it's, it's a slide door. Yeah. No, yeah. no, open. Yeah. Now, toilet use. Mm -hmm. This is where you've got to look at this thing as a very small container. It's 18 litres. Mm -hmm. So you have a bucket. Mm -hmm. um, so you want to maximise your capacity. To do that, to minimise the amount of flush water you use, and you'll have happy days. So you've got your two lids, the his and hers. Here's your lid. <laughs> now, make sure you keep it closed. Add some flush water, that wets the bowl. Use it, because we're going to, the stuff that you put in, we're going to use it to help flush it. So use it, throw your paper in, add a bit more water, and close your lid, and pull that in with the base. That then pulls all that waste in. So a human produces 250 to 300 mils of liquid each time. So if you're reducing the amount of flush water, which means you can get more in there. Doing it that way, you can get about 60 p's in the lid. 
do the math. Yeah, yeah I've got ACD, all right. <laughs> I'm not on the spectrum at all. Um, but always make sure you close that and um, and close the lid, boys. Yeah. Yeah. Got train dizzy. Oh yeah. Oh, right, yeah. So the lights are in here. Is you've got that one, which is water supply. Mm -hmm. That one up there mm -hmm. on the top. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Okay. Top left hand side is the um, cassette's not in correctly. Mm -hmm. okay. So if that's not in, it's going to send your lights. So you need to go back outside, make sure that's pushed in. Yeah. The two on the right, so the bottom right hand side is to say it's three quarters full. The top right is it's 100% full. Yeah. Can't squeeze any more in, the pump will stop working. So more storage, roof hatch. So wind those ones up, put an extraction fan on them. Over the mirrors, on sweet pipes. Trim off there somewhere. Now, my favourite appliance, the dishwasher. You do the washing of this for boss. The boss. Did you want to lens? Yeah. Um, so you've got your different wash cycles. We can roll through those, choose your wash cycles. Mm -hmm. You've also got your water levels. Mm -hmm. uh, now, maximum is 26 litres. It'll, on a full 30 minute wash, it'll do that twice, so 52 litres. Oh, uh, minimum is six litres. So, mm -hmm. depending on what you want to use. Mm -hmm. Now, this little basket at the top here, mm -hmm. um, good to hold your pegs, but its main job is to stop this thing from bouncing around okay. when you're travelling. Okay, so always make sure that's so, in. Yeah, always make sure it's in and locked in properly. mirror so you can watch yourself on the toilet. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. So in here you've got the light which has got its own switch on it. Yep. Uh, now with this shower head always make sure you take them off like, and put them somewhere safe because okay. um, they are known to it's jump cool. out of there and smash on the floor. Yeah. Also you don't want it rubbing on the wall which does that mark. Mm -hmm. so just because someone didn't do it when they come up from the um, So. Best place to store them is down on the floor in something. Wrap them in a towel we, or something. We use our laundry basket because it's got to go somewhere. So bath mat in, laundry basket in. This comes off here, it all goes into that. Keeping that off the wall and that nice and safe. Mm -hmm. Patch up this side, yep. and you've got a plug here. So why do I need a plug in there? I can't have a bath; it's too shallow. Hmm. Uh, but it's designed to sit in there when you're travelling to stop the grey water coming back up. Oh, okay. Like yep. at the moment, you've got grey water in the tank, so you want to have that not coming up here. So put the plug in, stops it sloshing around up in yep. here. We've had it on, on one bad day when it was full. We actually, come over the top here and fill the van yep. with grey water. Mm. Lovely. That's it. Okay, follow me in here. We'll keep going that way. I'm going to go back up that end of the hill before I do. I'm going to just run here. Do the shuffle. Right down in under here is the water pump. Okay, yep. so on that water pump, it's got this little bowl. So, what that is, is a free screen. So, if there's any muck that gets in the tank, there's a little mesh in there that stops any big lumps coming up in there and getting done through your pump into your water system. Um, so if, it, if your taps flow when you're on, on the tanks, turn them off, come and pull that cover off, clean out the mesh, and away it go again. So it's just a pre, pre, pre filter. Um, done that, that, that. And then I haven't done this roof hatch up that end. I missed it. Right, -o. so with these ones, the handle on this thing rotates around and it goes up onto these ribs. So rotate it around to unlock it and you've got to hold it in that position until you're ready to, to lock it okay. in place. Simple. Right. Those go all the way up. Uh, and then you've got your 
insect screen. Of course, the bugs like to die in here, so how do I get them back out? Clean it, open the hatch fully, hair dryer, blow them back out. Don't use the blow back, gentlemen, you'll keep the material. <laughs> your block out blind, so when I'm sleeping, I'll hint to that one, make sure you bring the hatch down in the night time. Um, otherwise, at some point, you'll either have a frog, a snake, or a possum sitting up on top here. <laughs> I saw one on Facebook the other day. There's a possum yeah, yeah. sitting in this in this curtain here, oh. and they're trying to push it back up. Oh, oh. Like so that, that was funny. Oh. I should have kept that video. But when you're travelling, make sure you bring it all the way back down and lock it up into these little put clear tabs on the actual hatch itself. Okay. Yep. I can see. Yeah. Gotcha. Yep. Under the bed. Good at shuffling in this job. We have these little tiny wings. Oh no. So our frame has a handle on it, so you lift it up. It's on gas struts, so it holds it up. Now, if you load these beds up with lots of big um, pillow top covers and blankets, they do get heavy, these struts won't support them. So if it starts to sag, you've got too much stuff on it. <laughs> now, comfort wise, we go pillow topper, so it's standard. So you can adjust these bed bases. So at the moment, that's really firm. If I slide that across there, it softens it. So you've got one here this side and one that side. So you can adjust both of those to make this bed hard, firmer or softer in, in the base itself. Yeah. And you could do, you know, like both have sides. one one side and yep. not the other yep. sort of thing. Set it, set it up yourselves. <laughs> you pair a lightweight, so you put them on them really soft. <laughs> Makes it a bit more comfy. But yeah, lots of storage in underneath there. When you lower this one back down, make sure you hang on to the handle because about there is where that strut legs go. If you don't, it slams really loudly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wake all the neighbours. Yeah. And I think we're done.